came to WWF in 2001 and you did the commentary with Jim Ross, it was completely different from Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross. It was a very happy relationship. You know, if Taz was going to beat up Jim Ross, Jerry Lawler would help him. But then you came in and you seemed to antagonize him. And I saw a clip last night from the Survivor Series 2001 where the show opened and you said, I'd just like to say it's been a misery working with you <laughs> to, to Jim Ross. And there's another segment where Kurt Angle and Steve Austin are having a match and you two are almost at the point of fighting. Yeah. But you're not fighting for each other. You're fighting for characters. And it was a very revolutionary kind of nine-month run that... that hasn't really been replicated since. What is it about that that needs to be taken into today's sort of commentary? Uh, I, I, I'm not a fan of today's commentary because I think it, it, it strays away too far from the premise of who are these two guys, why are they fighting, and why should I care enough to pay to see it? Um, Jim Ross and I had a very interesting relationship. He, I am his pro, in terms of commentary, I am Jim Ross's protege. He's the greatest talker in the history of the business. There's no doubt about it in my mind. There are those who will say that Stone Cold Steve Austin, what? Stone Cold Steve Austin, what? Stone Cold, what? 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 Stone Cold Steve Austin is the greatest talker of all time. He drew a lot of money talking. There are those who will say that The Rock is the greatest talker of all time. He drew a lot of money talking. I thank you for that comment. I've made a decent amount of money for a lot of people talking, but I'm responsible for getting Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar's opponent, and the event over. Stone Cold Steve Austin was responsible for getting Stone Cold Steve Austin, his opponent, and the event over. The Rock was responsible for getting Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, his opponent, and the event over. Jim Ross was responsible for getting everything over. The whole show. Credibility on the referees. This is the biggest presentation. This is the show to watch. There's a reason to watch WWE. There's a reason to watch Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock or Brock Lesnar or DX or the damn Dudleys or Mae Young and Mula or Mark Henry or anybody else that was put in front of you on television. It was Jim Ross's responsibility to get them over. He got everybody over. Greatest talker of all time. I used to learn about commentary from Jim Ross. I, by the way, like I said, what makes a great promo? You just got to be yourself. You're going to have a hard time believing this. I'm an asshole. <laughs> I don't just play an asshole on television. I'm a real life asshole. So when I got to sit next to my mentor, my friend, my teacher on WWE television, when I got a chance to sit next to him on television or on pay-per-view, I wanted to fuck with him like there was no goddamn tomorrow. Excuse me, Jesus. Because, because I knew he was so relaxed. He had been with Jerry Law. Puppies! Puppies! Eh, fuck you and your puppies. Okay? <laughs> I just wanted to needle him and needle him and needle him because I knew two things would happen. One, I would bring out the absolute best in Jim Ross. And in bringing out the best in Jim Ross, I'm doing my job. I'm also getting myself over because if I bring out the best in Jim Ross, he will really push me and bring out the best in me. And I don't know how good I am until I push him to push me to be the best that I could be. Number two, I also knew that he never took it personally, that he understood what I was doing, that he knew I was fucking with him, and he knew that in fucking with him, I was gonna push him to his limits, and that we would fight within, the, again, going back to promos, within the context of the storyline. I'm not gonna sit, I may call him a big, fat, ugly oaky that talks like this. I'm telling you now, gonna be a slobberknocker tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Back home in Oklahoma, we go to the slobberknocker and stone cold, stone cold, stone cold, stone cold. <laughs> but I, I then didn't say, hey, let's talk about your divorce, or hey, let's talk about your parking ticket, or hey, let's talk about, you know, uh, this embarrassing situation that happened to you in your personal life. And he never mentioned the name of my children either, because it wasn't about that. 
what happened was we get into these heated arguments and we really believed what we were saying, but we were saying it within the context of the storyline. So I would take up for Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was part of the alliance, and he would take up for Kurt Angle, or he would take up for The Rock, and whomever I would take up for, I, I, was, I was so in, in, embedded in the character, I believed everything that I was saying, and so did he, and it made for some pretty aggressive television, because we can both talk, and we can both go at each other, but we weren't going at each other about stuff that nobody, I mean, if I sat there and went, uh, ah, your second wife told me you're a real jerk off and you're this, and you know, you really don't, you're not a good father, and no, not that the second wife told me that, but if I say that to him, none of you are gonna care, none of you are gonna relate, none of you are gonna buy a ticket to see that, but, if I sit there and I say, your second wife called me today and she told me you're stupid and you got to be stupid because you say you don't believe in Stone Cold Steve Austin. And he says, oh, yeah, well, I think Kurt Angle is going to get his ass whipped by Stone Cold Steve. Or I think, I think uh, Steve Austin is going to get his ass whipped by Kurt Angle. Now we're talking about our storylines. Now we're embedded in each other's character. Now we're clashing. I loved working with Jim Ross. I had the time of my life opposing Jim Ross, and I had an even better time fucking with Jim Ross. <laughs> That camera goes on early and it blows the whole angle. Hey, why don't we just duck down and then the camera goes on early? Nobody will see. And so we duck down by the dashboard and I look over at him and he says, Can you believe they're fucking putting us together? And I'm like, we're both gonna be fucking fired in the next four weeks, don't you get it? And he goes, but the shit we're gonna stir in four weeks. They don't fuck.